Today's webinar will be led by Kristen Cousins, who is a solution engineer here at SAP Success Factors. Kristen, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you so much, Jesse, for that fantastic introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, just as Jesse said, my name is Kristen Cousins, and I'm a solution engineer with Success Factors. And today we're going to be talking about talent management with Success Factors. But before we jump right into the live solution, I wanted to start with a little bit of context. And I want you to imagine yourself in a situation. And you know that feeling when you walk through a company's front door. You immediately get a vibe, and you can just sense the energy. And sometimes it's flat and dull. But other times it's absolutely electric. But what is it that drives this energy? We think at SAP Success Factors that it's your people. Your talent are the heartbeat of your organization. And when they are engaged, when they're feeling supported by their company, when they're well-trained and confident in their roles, when they're rewarded appropriately for their performance, and most of all, when they're motivated to succeed, they're going to do what it takes to win. A Harvard Business Review study found that when asking companies how, what is imperative to achieving their business results, 71% of respondents ranked employee engagement as absolutely critical. The bottom line here, and I'm sure you can all agree, is that engaged talent equals extraordinary results. But the dynamics of engaging this talent, engaging these people at your organization, are changing. And this is for a number of reasons. First of all, there's an evolving workforce. I'm sure you've heard the statistics that there's more than five generations working uh, at one company at one time these days. You have your early talent that are communicating and, and delivering results with your, the most experienced employees at your organization. So the workforce is, is continuously evolving. On top of that, age, diversity, uh, globalization. So how do, you, how do you prepare for that? Secondly, workforce complexity, and this is especially true given the digital transformation that has completely engulfed not only our personal lives, but also in the workplace. And finally, this battle for talent, and, and this war for talent is especially relevant today. It is just so competitive out there. So how do you not only identify those individuals that are going to drive the most value for your organization, but bring them in and then retain them and have them continuing to drive the business results? Well, mastering these challenges, it, it requires a digital approach to your human resources organization. And your technology for your human capital management, it has to encompass this new set of digital capabilities. The first of these is that it must be continuous. You have to encourage continuous usage and engagement so that your employees are engaging with your talent management system in the same way they do with the technology in their pocket. Secondly, it has to be intelligent. Let's, just not, let's not just see this, uh, this digital transformation as a challenge, but let's actually leverage the new uh, technology that we have to actually suggest and recommend things to us that is going to drive the best business results. And finally, this technology must be extensible. You have to be able to expand solutions and, and build your own apps to really meet the current and future needs of your organization. Your HCM solution must support the growth of your company. And finally, this must be across the total workforce. So all of the employees at your organization should be interacting on one platform. So what do we do at Success Factors? Well, we think the answer is simple. At Success Factors, success is simply human. And how do we enable the talent to succeed? Well, I'm going to show you today a solution that is simple to use, simple to run, and finally, simple to succeed. And I would like to mention, before we dive into the solution today, that this is an all-encompassing solution. So SAP Success Factors runs from all the way from you know, the, the beginning of an employee's life cycle all the way to an, the end. So we're only going to see a small piece of this today. Uh, given the time that we have um, and, and the focus areas. So today we're going to be focusing on performance and goals, compensation, and succession and development as just a portion of the success factors suite. 
So let's see how SAP success factors can help you tap into the heartbeat of your organization and really leverage the number one investment at your company, which is your people. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the live solution demonstration. And there will be a Q&A session at the end. So as Jesse mentioned, please be sure to enter any questions that, we have, that you have um, as, the solution, uh, as the demonstration takes place, and uh, we'll be sure to address those right at the end. So what you should be seeing here um, pushed on to your presentation is uh, the Live Success Factors solution. And this is actually uh, the home page. And we're currently logged in as an individual. You see up here in the top corner, her name is Maya Cooper. And Maya Cooper is a manager at her organization. But this could really represent any hypothetical individual uh, at your company. This is Maya's home page. So this is what she sees every day when she logs in with her own unique login and password into the Success Factor solution. This is extremely flexible. All of these, um, we call them tiles, quite frankly, they're just boxes of information that are set up to, um, to reflect any sort of data that you have inside Success Factor. So um, Maya, you know, it, it may be possible that this My Info tile is something that um, you know, re recommended to her to have on her home page by her organization. She can have her goals reflected to her. Maybe she wants to dis um, you know, configure some tiles that represent some metrics. Um, she's configured for some analysis uh, using the data that's entered into the solution. You can see Maya can also see her team here. And she may have even configured over here a quick link style so that she can jump to whatever area she needs to come in and be, and be most efficient with today. So I showed this for a moment, but as you can see, they're, you know, all they're movable, they're flexible, extremely configurable based on, you know, who you are in the organization, what your position or role is, and what it is that you'd like to get done today. So let's take a moment and orient ourselves a little bit further with, um, with Maya and her team. So Maya is going to jump into the org chart here. And within the org chart, what we're going to see is um, a fantastic visual representation of how the data is, um, is, is really organized within success factors. And when we give that a minute to load there, I'm just going to show that this home screen that you see up top, um, this, and this navigation actually will navigate you to anything within success factors that it is that you utilize or leverage. I'm going to give this a reload here. I think my office Wi-Fi has timed out a little bit. But while I do that, I'm just going to talk about um, some of the role-based permissions that we have within the solution. So it's worth mentioning because this question comes up a lot. You know, data security, especially with a, a, um, a, a system that's in the cloud. How is it that I protect not only my um, information, but what it is that certain individuals can see within the solution? So what we're going to be able to see is that uh, everything that Maya has access to view is based on not just her role, but uh, what it is that um, you know, she has permissions to see. So given that Maya is a manager, um, she may be able to come in and view her direct team and uh, certain information on them, like their goal plan or their performance reviews. But she may not have access to view, let's say, the goal plans of, um, of other teams which would make sense given that, that you know, security-wise, that may not be something that she'd like to see. So there we go. We got that Wi-Fi reconnected there. Here we have Maya Cooper, uh, who is, you know, the individual that we have the role of today. And here we have her direct team. And, and this org chart is naturally drawn based on the relationships that you have set up um, through your employees. So Maya is set as the manager for these individuals. If she'd like to view anything about these individuals, She's going to click into this quick card here, and we're going to see this quick card come up a couple of times throughout the solution demonstration today. And it gives her some, some quick information um, that's accessible to her through all parts of, of the solution. She can see her um, employee here, Jeff, uh, you know, his role, where he's located. And if she even wanted to come in and take action, she could absolutely do so and, uh, and jump to, to where it is that she wants to uh, take some action on Jeff today. So that role-based permission um, that I mentioned earlier, that's completely applicable here. So for example, if Maya drilled into her own quick card, she might not say, you know, have the ability to, um, to give herself a spot bonus in the same way that she would be able to give or recommend for one of her employees, as nice as that may be. 
So she can also drill into the uh, the direct teams of of her uh, of her employees. So if she wanted to see who it is that Jeff manages, she has the opportunity to do that as well. And Success Factors also supports matrix or dotted line relationships. So you see this dotted line going out here to the individual on the far right. Um, if you know Jeff wanted to push any sort of functionality out to uh, to Sydney, who who may be a matrix relationship employee who may have two managers. The solution absolutely supports that. So very flexible, very functional. But Maya wants to take a little bit of a closer look at this individual, Jeff, today. So let's go ahead and do that. And Maya is going to come into Jeff's public profile. And what this is is an ability for Jeff to really, um, you know, kind of represent himself to the other individuals in the organization. He can throw up a background image, um, you know, it'll have all the relevant information on him that's necessary, and even a little description of himself or any personal information he wants to include. And what Maya is actually considering today is a, a transfer of Jeff from one organization to the other. Um, he may, you know, he's just moving location, but what Maya wants to be uh, absolutely sure of is that he's up to date on all of his goals. So she'd like to check in on his goal plan. And when Maya comes in to view um, Jeff's current goal plan, you'll see that it's set up in a very simple way. The, the goal plan within Success Factors is really designed to, to very easily communicate not just the goals that an employee is working on at that time, but also their status, so how it is that they're tracking on their goals. This goal plan is extremely flexible and extremely configurable because Success Factors knows that all the, you know, every, every company, every organization, uh, they all have very different ways of not just organizing objectives for their employees, but also, you know, how it is they want to report on them. So these categories here, financial or customer, those are all very configurable, and, and this template can really be designed to, to represent your process and what works best for your organization. Also, uh, a number of these metrics here, you know, the ability to weight goals, um, displaying a due date, even tying a metric to a goal, all of that is, is you know, optional and very configurable and just based on your business needs. Maya can come in if she wanted to add a new goal for Jeff. She has the opportunity to do so. She can also cascade goals. So if she wants to select a goal for Jeff and come in and cascade this goal, she has the opportunity to do that as well. Another thing that Maya uh, likes to check on when she's coming in and looking at the goal plans of her employees is the execution map. And what this is is a great visual representation of all the goals and all the goal alignment within the organization. And this is something that Success Factors does extremely well. So you'll see that Maya can see this goal here um, that she has to implement accurate cost forecast templates across the region. And she sees that that goal has been cascaded down to Jeff and, and really um, tailored to him and how it is, you know, what it is that he can do every day to help Maya achieve that goal. If she wanted to drill in even further, she can see that Jeff has actually cascaded that goal down to his direct team as well. And this execution map is great for driving things like accountability. As you can see with the color coordinates, it, you know, it reflects how it is that employees are tracking on this goal. So if someone needed to come in and have a, a discussion with this individual here, James, on the fact that his probability of success is low, they can absolutely do so by seeing the goal tracking and how it is that, um, that that's aligning up. So here we see that, that Jeff's, uh, Jeff's direct team, his goals roll right up, their goals, sorry, roll right up to Jeff's goal, and that rolls up to Maya's goal. So this really drives that employee engagement that, um, that we've been talking about just, you know, since the beginning of the hour. That is essential to the organization. Employees can see that what they're working on every single day will eventually drive up to the overall strategic objectives of the organization. And when Maya comes back to this goal plan here, she can see that Jeff is actually, um, he's on track to complete all of these goals. So she knows that he's set to make this transfer uh, if that's what it is that she chooses to do. However, this leaves us in an interesting position because as Jeff is going to be transferred to another location, his role is going to be left vacant. And this is something that you absolutely need to plan for as an organization. Uh, you know, you want to keep up um, with the, the constantly evolving workforce that you have and be able to plan for absences, whether expected or not, and uh, continue on driving the success of your organization without missing a beat. 
So success factors provides a succession solution that is incredibly powerful, but at the same time quite easy to interact with. So you see Maya Cooper here, and just as that goal plan, um, sorry, that organizational chart that we saw earlier, it's kind of the, um, the same view here. Uh, Maya can see her direct team, and, um, and even you know, in succession we provide the ability to view open positions. And uh, this is incredibly important because you want to know if there's a position on your team or on another team that needs to be filled. If Maya wanted to come in and fill this position, she could first of all create a job acquisition um, that would drag out to um, an external, uh, find an external candidate, and that uh, integrates directly with our recruiting solutions. You could open up a job acquisition from there. But today, when she's planning for the succession of Jeff, she knows that she wants to drive um, somebody from, from internal, from within the organization. So she wants to search first within her company and see if she has anybody that's really matching the um, necessary uh, requisites for this role that Jeff is currently filling. And Maya wants to come in and utilize the talent search. The talent search is incredibly powerful. And it's not just for filling vacant roles. You can use it to staff a new location or a new talent, a new, um, a new project team. It's, it's really just like having a, a Google search on your employee. So Maya can come in here and actually, you know, identify certain things, what it is that she wants this individual to have, down to the most finite of, of detail. And when she clicks search here, she's going to see a number of individuals come up that, um, that may be, you know, possible candidates for this role that she'd like to fill. And if she comes in and chooses to compare them against each other, Maya is going to find that this side-by-side -side comparison is a great way to really um, assess individuals and what it is that they can bring to the table when it comes to filling this role. If she wanted to go deeper on this, you know, past just basic information, she could absolutely come in and select how it is she wants to view. She can manipulate her perspective. You know, let's say she wants to see what, is, what are these individuals' leadership experience. And the solution will pull that right up and have it visible for Maya to come in and look at. So this is a great way for Maya to kind of do her own mini assessment, as well as identify individuals across, you know, regions, across locations, um, across even, you know, different positions and different teams, and really kind of pick out and identify uh, that talent that is directly relative to this role that she's trying to fill. If she didn't want to nominate any of these individuals for, for um, this specific role today, what she could do is actually add them to a talent pool. So let's talk a little bit about talent pools. And talent pools are a great way to set yourself up for success when it comes to succession. And what it really does is kind of group and bucket um, individuals in your organization, you know, no matter what position they're in or, or maybe what region they're from, and just kind of group them by, by their readiness for certain roles. So you see we have a top talent pool here. And um, once it comes time to plan for a certain uh, role or position, I can just dip right into this top talent pool uh, if, if that's what she's searching for and find the individuals who have already been identified to represent these traits. She can come in and view, um, you know, maybe a readiness that's been set by, um, by a manager of this individual or based on metrics within the solution and view some comments. You know, this individual, he's ready to move into a more challenging role. And these top talent pools can be anything that you find relevant to your organization, you know, executive leadership. Um, you know, anything like that, uh, it just, it, it makes for, um, for being able to very smoothly fill the gaps when they happen because it does happen. So from here, Maya, Maya feel, feels as though she has uh, the information that she needs to be able to come up with a successor for Jeff. But what she knows is that she's going to have to present this um, not only to the board, as Jeff is in a very important position, but she's also going to have to be able to present this to her HR team so they can make sure that they collaborate on, uh, you know, the right individual and the right result for this role. Luckily, Maya has the presentations tool within the solution. And what this gives her the ability to do, and if anyone makes PowerPoints every day, um, you're going to see this as incredible. I know it's, it's just a, a fantastic tool to have at your fingertips. Uh, she's actually able to leverage um, live data within the solution. So Maya can load in a PowerPoint template. She sees here, you know, this is the agenda she's going to present to the board. These are really just all her PowerPoint slides. But when we get a little further on in the presentation, you're going to see that she's actually going to be able to pull in and leverage live data from within the solution 
to bring to this board meeting and to bring to this, you know, human resources collaborative session that, uh, that's going to be held about finding a successor for Jeff. And coming in right off her presentation, she can actually click into individuals, uh, you know, within the, these talent pools that have been designed, individuals that she's identified as good successors for Jeff, and actually click into each of their profiles. And again, right in front of the board, leveraging live, real-time data from within the solution, assess, you know, who is going to be best to fill this role and uh, actually take over for, for any, any position that you're planning for in the organization. So whatever information um, that, that uh, Maya would like to come in and view, she can absolutely do so. You know, she can see maybe within the nine box that, uh, that this organization has, has created, where, do the, where does this individual fall? You know, are they willing to relocate? This could be incredibly important based on what role you're planning for. What are their language skills? If it's a global organization, um, you know, these are things that you need to know. How are they trending on their performance? Um, you know, what, what has been identified as their potential rating? Being able to come in and, and see the tags that each of these employees has and really how, you know, how they've been engaging with the solution and how it is that they've been performing on their team. It's incredibly essential to have all of this just at your fingertips and ready to utilize when it comes for the workforce planning of your organization. And Maya has the ability to do so. So Maya feels as though she is quite prepared um, to not only find a successor for Jeff, but also to come to Jeff and, and ask him about this transfer that, um, that she would like to, to leverage. So um, Maya sends Jeff a note. She can actually do that right through the solution. And she asks him to have a meeting with her, a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And let's switch roles here. Um, we're actually going to jump into the perspective of Jeff and see how it is that he interacts with the Success Factor solution. So Jeff is actually, um, you know, he's on the train on his way into the office. Uh, and when he gets this notification from his Maya manager, that, um, his manager Maya, that she wants to have a meeting um, about his possible role transfer. So. Uh, luckily, Jeff has uh, the Success Factors application um, fully functioning on his phone. And he can come right in and actually take a look um, at a lot of the notes he needs to prepare for this meeting. And I just want to point out here that, that Jeff does have all the capabilities to see, you know, a lot of the things that we already saw as, as possible to view within the solution. You know, he can see his personal information, his public profile, maybe some job information. Um, it's like he just has all of that desktop capability right here on his phone, right in his pocket with him at all times. He can even drill in further and take a look at the organizational chart, the same way that we saw Maya do on the desktop. But today, what we're going to take a look at is this continuous performance management. Um, and this has been a push for a lot of organizations these days, you know, maybe moving away from that formal review, and we will take a look at a formal review um, a little bit further on in the demonstration. But success factors, you know, we do support all of the, um, you know, the, the trends within the, the line of business, and one of these in recent times has been, you know, the need to capture this constant engagement and constant feedback between an employee and a manager. You don't just want to have, you know, uh, reviews at the very end of, of every uh, time period. And some organizations do, but other organizations desire kind of a more, a more documented um, engagement tool. So Success Factors Continuous Performance Management um, provides managers and their employees and organizations as a whole with that ability. So Jeff can come in here and see, he has a number of activities that he's, um, has, he's been working on. He can set a status for them. Uh, you know, are they important? Are they paused? Uh, it's just really a way to keep track of what Jeff is working on every single day. And both Jeff and his manager, Maya, have access to this tool. So as you can see, Jeff can come in and actually comment on, um, on you know, these things he's working on. And his manager, Maya, can come in and comment on them as well. And so this just really gives Jeff um, the ability to, to remain informed on how he's working, gain constant feedback from his manager, and, uh, and always be prepared for these meetings. Nothing's ever a surprise, especially when it comes to performance reviews. And just to touch on how to add this activity, you know, you can enter the name for the activity. And what's especially important, um, you know, when talking about that goal alignment that we touched on earlier, is not just, uh, you know, coming in and setting the status for the goal based on, you know, the priority, but also you'll see, and I'll drill in here on this, um, this goal piece here, you can actually tie an activity to a goal. 
And you'll see that uh, actually all of Jeff's goals will roll in right from his goal plan and be available for him to come in and, you know, tie that activity, what he's working on every day, right to a goal that might be, you know, for a time period for a whole year. So that he and Maya can both stay updated on what's going on, um, you know, and very, very engaged in what it is that he's doing every day. So in touching up on his activities and kind of the feedback and conversation that um, he's been having with Maya over the past, uh, you know, week or month or however it is that this organization is organized, um, we are going to, uh, sorry, Jeff is prepared for this meeting. He knows he is. And when he goes in and has this meeting with Maya, uh, it, Maya, you know, introduces the idea of a transfer to him, and he is very happy to accept. But being that he has a team that he manages, he has to come in and, and tie up some loose ends. So he knows that he has performance reviews to complete. So we are now looking at um, the Success Factors homepage for Jeff who is um, Maya's employee who's being transferred. And he can, you know, you'll see that his tiles actually differ from, uh, from those of Maya. And that's because Jeff has a different role. And he may have configured, you know, different tiles or just, you know, given his position, has different priorities in the solution. So that's going to be a reason why uh, he can see and access different things. So Jeff is going to jump right into performance. So on the phone, um, on, the, uh, on the iPhone, we took a look at that kind of continuous performance piece. Now we're going to take a look at a more um, formal performance review, both of which are available for organizations to leverage or not. It's all based on, on what works best for your business. So let's come in and take a look at this performance review. And Jeff is currently reviewing one of his newer employees, Jada Baker. He has uh, some, you know, information available to him up top. Uh, he can also see um, a little bit of a, uh, it's like, what's the word I'm looking for? A menu here. And he can see all these different sections. Um, and, you know, these, again, uh, it's, it's just important to emphasize that these templates are so flexible. You know, if you don't want to have core values on your performance reviews, you don't have to. Um, it's all just about how it is that you assess your employees um, going forward. And I do want to point out this route map. And what this route map does up here is it actually just represents a workflow. So this, you know, within the system, this is the workflow that this form takes. You know, first Jada assessed herself in this form, and now Jeff is going to come in and assess her. And then maybe, you know, there's a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Again, very flexible. Whatever workflow you want to set up for um, a performance review is absolutely entirely up to you. So let's come down here and take a look at some of the, um, the tools that we have for actually doing performance reviews. Uh, when Jeff comes into goals, um, all these goals here flow directly in from Jada's goal plan. So, you know, there's no re-entry or re-keying of data, no need for error, and, and definitely no time wasted. Jeff can see how Jada rated herself. Um, perhaps they use a 1 through 5 here at this organization, and you can see those ratings up there at the top. But if they use 1 through 10, if they just use words, um, you know, any scale is, is, is possible and supported. And let's just say that, you know, Jeff comes in and, and types something like this. Data is doing well on this goal for a young employee. So I'll repeat that there. Jada is doing well on this goal for a young employee. Now, let's hold on a minute. That may not be exactly something that you want on a professional and documented performance review. So what can we do about that? What can we do about that kind of questionable language that just happens? Well, Success Factors provides you with a legal scan. And I just clicked and do it manually, but most of our customers have this run automatically uh, on, on this performance form. And what you see is actually um, the legal scan identifies language or text uh, within, you know, what has been entered that just may be questionable or that um, individuals may want to reconsider. So, for example, um, in this case, it's selected young. And why? You know, is this subject really irrelevant? It provides you with some suggestions. You know, use care when describing age or personal things like religion or political affiliations. You know, those types of things just don't belong in professional uh, performance reviews. 
So, you know, you can add or take away from this library. Um, it, it can all be, you know, based on your industry or just general things. We do provide a general um, legal scan to you right out of the box. But it's just kind of like having a little HR angel on the shoulder of every manager that's filling out a performance review and just make sure that, you know, none of that questionable language kind of slips through the cracks. Another thing that we'll take a look at here, um, and, and this is specific to competencies, and it's possible that some, you know, that your organization utilizes competencies. Um, many do, and what they really are are core values or skills that are either, um, you know, relevant to the entire organization or um, are just specific to one job. So, for example, in Jada's job, this competency of driving continuous improvement is very important. And it's something that she's aware of and that she works on. And um, it's also something that she's assessed on. And if Jeff comes in here and he's going to rate uh, Jada on, on driving her continuous improvement, you know, it may be the end of the day. Uh, Jeff may be tired. Uh, or, you know, maybe he just can't. He's having writer's block. We've all been there. He can't think of what it is that he wants to say. He knows how he feels about Jada in this area, but he just can't put it into words. Well, luckily, we're here to give Jeff a little bit of help. So a writing assistant is another extremely helpful tool in success factors when it comes to filling out reviews or forms. And what it actually does is produce for Jeff a library of very relevant uh, language that relates exactly to the competency that he's rating Jada on at that time. So Jeff has the ability to actually choose from a couple categories. Is Jada exceeding uh, his expectations for her in this area? Is she just about meeting them? Or does she really need to improve um, when it comes to, you know, driving continuous improvement? And Jeff can come in here and actually select any one of these um, little quotes and uh, place them, and you'll see it in this preview quote rule up below. So it will actually uh, place that quote right there. So from here, um, he can, you know, select a narrative. Uh, you know, and that's just based on ease, how it is that he's been filling out the form so far. Um, on top of that, we also provide sentiment analysis. So um, what this, you know, uh, if, if this option were turned on in this specific instance, um, he would be able to adjust the positivity or perhaps the, um, you know, the criticalness of this review. If it's something he really wants to emphasize, um, he can do so and adjust that sentiment. And finally, you know, let's say we want to place this quote. You'll see it appear here in the back. But we do want to keep working. Um, you know, let's not just assess Jada on her performance thus far. Let's actually give advice. Success Factors provides a coaching solution, uh, coaching advisor, sorry, that actually ties to each one of these um, of these uh, phrases or, or quotes that we see above. So, based on what it is that Jeff selected, he can come in and kind of place a little bit of, you know, more encouraging um, and and constructive feedback, and place that quote, and you'll see it appear here behind. So then when Jeff comes in, you know, it's not just about cookie cutter responses. Um, he can actually come in and, and, and fill out these areas, tailor it specifically to Jada and how she's doing. Uh, you know, in no way do we want to give, um, you know, employees, uh, you know, kind of pre-written or canned feedback. It's just a place to start and, um, and ensure that you're using really professional and uh, constructive language when it is that you're assessing your employees. And finally, at the end here, Jeff can see that, you know, based on what it is that his organization rates on, you know, maybe they weight certain areas greater than others, he can actually come in and, and see um, Jada's overall rating. And she's doing really, really well. So he's happy to see that she's almost rating up at a five um, it, when it comes to her performance. And he's, uh, he's pleased because Jada has been a fantastic team member um, and, and a fantastic employee thus far. So another thing that Jeff would like to wrap up, um, given that he is uh, transferring to a new role, he has to wrap up his compensation planning for his current team. So he can just jump right here into the compensation um, area of the solution. And what you're going to see is actually a, a worksheet, a uh, planning worksheet for Jeff to work on. And, and in, you know, salary equity and, and variable pay plans, they're all, of course, completely different processes. But success factors, you know, if you wish, provides you the option of having all of them kind of within the same uh, worksheet just for convenience to stake. So when you're planning for a group over time, you have the ability to come in and, um, and do it all at once.
So Jeff can see here his direct team. So he can only see the individuals that he has permission to be planning on. Um, when it comes to you know deciding the allocation of budget, and then later uh, later on kind of the distribution and the logistics of of the pay. And he has a couple of options up here, and, and we'll click through them just to um, just to show them to you. So first, we have instructions. A lot of organizations like to provide you know some guidelines or instructions to their employees when they're filling out compensation planning. You can attach documents here if you'd like. Um, very flexible. Secondly, we're seeing this this route map again. Um, so the good old route map. Uh, this just shows the workflow uh, for this specific form. Finally, some metrics. So Jeff likes to have these metrics, you know, based on information in the solution. He likes to have them available to him to plan off of. So you know, if he'd like to have some of these um, these analysis boxes while he does his compensation planning, they're absolutely here for him to use. And last but not least, the budget. So what is the budget um, for this specific group, you know, for the overall organization? Whatever, um, whatever kind of slice of dice you want to uh, display to your employees during the compensation planning, you can absolutely do so. And, uh, you know, another thing that Jeff has the capability to do is actually focus on rewarding his employees for their performance. So uh, Jeff has the ability to come in and actually view the overall performance rating. So how, you know, when he's planning compensation for each of these individuals, how is it that they're actually performing? You know, he can he can reward these individuals based on um, you know the how it is that they are uh, actually doing at the organization. So really driving that paper performance culture. It happens to be an initiative in uh, in his company at this time. So he has the ability to look into that. Another thing um, that's that's available within the solution are, of course, um, guidelines. So let's say that Jeff comes in and um, you know maybe it's a slip, of, you know, a, a keystroke mistake, or maybe maybe he's actually coming in and giving one of his individuals a ten thousand dollar bonus, just as an example. We'll actually see that the solution pulls up a um, a bit of a uh, alert here. So you can design this in a number of ways. Of course, you know it can be a soft stop. You know, please provide an explanation for this before sending it on to you know the next approver um, in the planning. Just let me know why you're doing this, as it is outside of guidelines. Or you can have a hard stop and say, you know, hey, that's not happening. Um, you know, let's not uh, let's not allow the the form to continue on in the solution without really uh, assessing this and fixing this. You know, you must stay within the guidelines. So it's great to have that um, just kind of as a uh, makes you feel a little better about um, you know the planning that's being done with with the, the uh, resources in your organization. So another thing that Jeff has um, Jeff has the ability to do is actually come in and look at the compensation history, the compensation profile for all these individuals. So the solution does a great job of bringing uh, information to you when it's relevant and when it's needed. So all of this information is already stored within the solution. You'll see here he's looking at um, at the same employee he was looking at performance on before, and that's Jada. And uh, he can see her compensation history. He can see you know, her salary positioning within her pay grade. Um, things like maybe recommendations for, for what to do next um, based on perhaps a role change or um, just given you know, that it's a new year, a new coming year. And all of this is, is relevant to, you know, Jeff's compensation planning at this time. And it's also just great to have all this history available um, so that there's never a question when it comes to uh, planning for the allocation of, you know, the money within your organization. And it just so happens that uh, at this time, Maya, uh, Jeff's manager, actually comes over to Jeff's desk and tells him, you know, the, I present to the board. I use you should use the presentation tool. She gave a great presentation to the board. And Jada, um, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's employee, has actually been chosen as the successor for his role. So when Jeff transfers to uh, his new position, Jada is going to be promoted to fill his shoes. So that's fantastic. She's been performing incredibly well. Uh, she meets all the requirements for, um, for this job. But one thing that we want to make sure is that for you know the remaining time period until Jada actually fills Jeff's shoes, 
you want to make sure that she's on track to be, um, you know, fully developed for this role and kind of accelerate her training in this area so that she's extremely confident, extremely comfortable, uh, you know, on the day that um, her new job begins. So let's go ahead um, and take a look at Jada. And from there, we can actually jump right into her development plan. So uh, this development plan is set up to be very intuitive and actually um, you know, reflect in the same way that the goal plan does, just for consistency and ease's sake. I know it very clearly, as you can see, um, you know, communicates what the development goal is. Uh, you can assign things as measure of success or recommended employee actions. You'll also see here that um, it, it integrates uh, quite flawlessly with our learning solution. So if you wanted to assign a learning activity to a development goal, uh, you know, that's specific to um, that development goal, you can do so right from here and, uh, and just draw it right, that right in from the learning area of our solution. What Jeff also has the ability to do, and what Jada as well has the ability to do, is actually define um, a career worksheet. And the career worksheet within the development section of Success Factors actually allows you to identify a specific role that you are either um, you know, going to be going into soon or that perhaps you would like to go into soon. From here, we can actually view some of the role details. And this pulls right from job profiles um, that, that are assigned to each role within your organization. So you can build out for every role a description of the job, a summary of the job, the competencies or skills that tie directly to this position, you know, that are important for success in this position. And this is really where this competency section is really where the, um, the career worksheet gives employees the opportunity to succeed. So, um, you know, Jeff and, and also Jada, the, the new employee, can come in and view the competencies that are necessary for this new role that she's going to be filling and compare that to how Jada is currently performing on these competencies. And if she isn't performing up to par in a certain area, or perhaps, you know, thinking globally is a competency she hasn't been working on yet but, you know, will need for her new role, she can come in, assign development goals, um, to this competency, you know, things that she needs to work on, assign learnings then to that development goal um, to, you know, train her up to speed. So overall, it just really gives visibility into, um, you know, the comparison of how that employee is performing compared with how it is that, uh, is that they need to be performing for their new role. So at the end of the day here, we have um, Maya, Jeff's manager, who was very happily, through the succession solution, actually selected an employee um, to fill Jeff's role. Jeff is transferring to a new position. I'm very excited to do so. And finally, Jada, um, the, you know, Jeff's employee who's going to be filling her, her manager's shoes and actually taking over his team. And she is being fully developed to um, you know, accelerate her readiness for this role and be confident on her first day in the role and, uh, and, and do a fantastic job. So all of these things were handled, and of course this was at a high level, but all of it's handled right within success factors, um, even just using the few pieces that we chose to focus on today. So at this time, um, I do believe that we have the ability to answer some questions. And I know that there have been, um, there have been questions coming in through the, um, through the tool here. Uh, Jesse, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do. We have a lovely queue lined up here. So, diving right in, can the entire SS solution be on-premise or just the talent ma management module? Um, the talent management, so all of this, all of success factors is on the cloud. But the fantastic thing about Success Factors is that you can actually uh, choose an area that if you're moving from on-premise to the cloud, you can choose an area that you want to start with and build out from there. So um, a lot of our customers, when moving on to Success Factors, do kind of employ a hybrid solution um, you know, in their transformation from on-premise into the cloud. So any of the areas you saw today um, can absolutely be used on the cloud in combination with, uh, you know, some of the on-premise systems that you may have today. Uh, it's all about, you know, getting you where you need to be, addressing your pain points first, you know, where, where it is that you want to start with success factors, and really building it out from there. 
So the answer is yes, um, can actually, uh, you know, have, have some parts on, on premise, some in the cloud. It all just depends on, on your business needs. Wonderful. And here's one, can it run on iOS and Android? And is there a preference or are there limitations? Yeah, so you can run iOS as well as Android. Um, it, even on, I, you know, I use it all the time on my iPad, um, and maybe that's just a, you know more of a, a product of my eyesight. But I, um, it, it runs on anything. Um, it's set up to be responsive technology, so it doesn't matter the device. Uh, it's all based on what you prefer. That's all the info I had. Let's see. Our next question is. Can we configure different workflows for different forms? Yes, absolutely. So each form within the solution, whether that's, let's say, a performance review or, um, you know, maybe the compensation planning, all of those can have, uh, you know, specific workflows tied to them. On top of that, you know, if different performance reviews, let's say, for different roles can have different workflows. So if you have um, a workflow, you know, for one role, but in another role, you want to send that performance review, you know, through an additional approver or maybe through, an, you know, an HR review. You can absolutely do that. So very configurable, very flexible, and, um, and you have the ability to be, be quite specific. Excellent. Do the goals flow from the goal plan right into the performance review? Yeah, great question. They do. Um, so, so that's fantastic, and that's actually, you know, an example of really the beauty of success factors. Um, it, one of the one of the wonderful things about it is the data flow and the integration. And it sounds simple, but especially if you're coming from an on-present, uh, on on-premise, or um, or kind of you know fractured or siloed solutions, having everything on one platform. And, and having that, you know, all that data available to you and only having to enter it once is just, it, it's like, it's amazing. It's, it's such a time saver. It, um, it keeps errors from, uh, you know, it, errors from potentially reaching information. It kind of eliminates that risk. And also, you know, success factors is built to be intelligent. So you're going to see the data that is relevant to whatever job you're doing in the solution today really just kind of rise to the surface and, um, and be pushed to you based on, you know, where it is in the solution that you're working or what it is that you'd like to accomplish. Excellent. Are there issues with cloud storage and crossing international boundaries and the associated data security privately legislation? Ooh, what a question. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the factors does have um, you know all of the, you know the top notch cloud security. Uh, we really do, and we I mean we run some of the um, the most important organizations, the most secure organizations run on success factor software. We have a very impressive customer list. Um, you know the the kind of the specifics of that. Uh, you know, I would like to have with a more um, technical person who could answer those questions, but I have bottom line, um, yes, the, the answer is we do have all of those kind of security needs um, that our, our customers require, and uh, it's, it's as secure as the cloud can be. Excellent. And just a note to our audience member, while Kristen is talking, we actually have two other folks on the line, Aaron and Susie, who are helping us to answer. And Aaron just wants to say that we do have data centers in every geography of the world. So just to add that into the last statements that were going around. Next question in our queue is, can workflows be sent manually to an individual rather than relying on automated agent determination? Yes. Short and to the point. Dig it. <laughs> All right. The next question. Uh, in an instance without Employee Central, if I'm using the job selector compensation functionality and change a user's role, will this be updated into the employee profile? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Sure. So in an instance without EC. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Sorry. Oh, I thought I had another oh. line. Um, uh, in an instance without EC, if I'm using the job selector compensation functionality and they change the user's role, will that then be updated within the employee profile? 
Yes. So all of that is just based on the communication um, integration that you have set up between, uh, you know, the cloud, uh, the cloud talent solution and whatever you're running your core HRIS on. So um, SuccessFactors does have, you know, support open APIs, and we do have a number of pre-built integrations with um, a lot of the popular core HRIS uh, solutions today. So um, that's just, you know, a, a communication um, event that would take place there between edits or changes that you make in, um, in the talent management, you know, success factors area back to, um, you know, the employee record and wherever that is stored. Outstanding. Is there a limit to the workflow steps in the PM form? Uh, no. Not that I've heard of. I've seen up to, you know, a, a number, a lot, a lot of workflow steps. So we haven't encountered a limit thus far. I'll put it that way. That's great. That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and our next question, do the competencies cross over the whole solution? So they can, yeah. So if you want, um, you know, competencies, uh, let's say you have, you know, company competencies, so competencies that apply to your entire organization. Maybe these are things like, you know, trust, um, you know, some of those like intangibles that are you, you just find important for all of your, your talent to possess and to work on. So those can apply across the entire organization. But you can also have role-specific competencies, so, you know, certain competencies that are just tied to, you know, a job or a position that are necessary for that position. So, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Um, you know, both are available. It's, uh, it's just all about how um, you want to set up your organization's uh, goals and competencies and then kind of narrow that down into specific uh, positions or individuals. And I, you sort of touched on this at the beginning of that answer about um, where those competencies come, the competencies come from. And so the, a, another question based on that same thing is, can we use our own competencies in the solution? And I think you say the answer is yes. Is that right? Yes, of course. So, so yeah, there are some, you know, we, we supply some core out-of-the-box um, functionality. A lot of that, um, you know, a lot of the technology you saw today, like, uh, you know, competencies, things like writing assistant, things like legal scan, um, you know, even goal libraries, we provide that to you. So if you'd like to use the ones, um, kind of, uh, you know, general ones that we provide, you're absolutely welcome to do so. But on top of that, you know, every industry, every organization has their own um, requirements and their, you know, specific needs. So you can absolutely design your own competencies and, uh, and fill them out and tie them to jobs. Excellent. All right, we are narrowing down the last couple questions here. What is the difference between the, SF, the success factors functionality and a normal HCM solution aside from the mobile component? So there are a few, um, you know, there are a few changes uh, from one to the other. Um, and, and if you're really transferring from on-premise into success factors cloud solution, we will provide that type of, you know, consultative help um, in the process of doing that. So absolutely make sure that you're fully confident on any changes that come, you know, maybe based on um, your certain workflows. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a big question, right? It would be pretty specific on, you know, how your business practices are working and uh, what may change in moving to a cloud solution in general. But, um, but overall, you know, we are here to ensure success for your business. So if that's a, a move that you're making, um, it's, uh, you know, we're going to be there to talk about it and make this a positive transition for your organization. Wonderful. And let's, let's close with this last question. Is it possible to assign competencies massively with other criteria other than the core competencies or job code? Oh, with other criteria. With Hmm. You see this question? Let me see. Let me pull this up. Is it possible to assign competencies massively with other criteria than core competencies or job codes? Yep, absolutely. And that's the kind of answer I love to give. All right. <laughs> um, there is another question in there about quantifying ROI, and we just want to state out there that we have a team of consultants who create those sort of ROI cases. So um, that's an answer in your direction. Uh, Kristen, I will hand it back to you to cover the last couple of slides to get us excited for Success Connect, and then I will close us out. So please take the board. Sure. All right. Thanks so much. 
Um, okay, thank you everyone for your questions. Some great questions there, and um, and I hope that that we can follow through on the rest and any of them that didn't get answered. But um, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation, um, and in doing so, we'll come to our next one. So we have more to our HR Run Live demo series. Uh, the next one coming up on July 28th is going to focus on Employee Central. So all of that core HRIS, we got a couple questions on there. Um, you know, integrates uh, flawlessly with our, our talent management solutions. Um, so a great way to uh, to just understand more about what Success Factors has to offer. And then um, there will actually be a learning and jam solution, uh, and that's going to uh, uh, presentation. Sorry, and that's going to be presented on August 11th. And we kind of touched a little bit on you know the learning piece. We saw the ability to tie that in with the development goal. Um, so we, we provide formal learning as well as jam, which is collaborative learning. So um, so that'll be uh, a great one there. Jam is a lot of fun. And then um, we also just wanted to, uh, to mention that Success Connect 2016 is coming up. So that is at the end of August. Um, it's a great time. It's in Vegas. You can't not have fun in Vegas. So uh, there's going to be a number of uh, fantastic you know, speakers, um, really respectable and, and, and educated uh, individuals from our organization, our Success Factors president, um, along with a number of other executives that are going to be uh, not just there, but also um, presenting and educating and interacting with everybody. And then finally, um, we do have you know a little bit of detail here on the Success Connect. There's going to be you know breakout sessions where you get to get a little bit more intimate with um, the solution with some of our uh, solutions consultants. So it will be a spotlight track on recruiting and onboarding, um, another fantastic piece of our Success Factors solution. And finally, um, you know, there's going to be abilities to not just get live in the demo system like you saw today, but also network um, with other individuals and become part of this community of leaders uh, in HR. So Success Connect is a fantastic event, and, um, and I hope you, you get the chance to go. Wonderful, Kristen, and thank you for joining us today. A big thanks to our speaker, Kristen Cousins, and to you, our audience. We thank you for your time and your participation. Just a reminder that today's webinar has been recorded.